Good morning, everybody. I think we are already towards the moon now. Anyway, I'm virtually late by one and a half hour to speak, and 10 minutes have been provided to say something. But fortunately, I have a full talk of one hour after this session, where I'll be dealing with the agricultural situation and also the climate change and the interaction of both in a little more detailed manner. But let me say I am very fortunate and feel honored to have been invited to this very important function by Dr. Chaudhary. This is my fourth trip to Sabur. The first was in 1970s when I was a national project coordinator and one of the centers was Sabur for Mango, Gava and Lichi. And I visited here to see what is happening and also to discuss what could happen in years to come. The second visit was when I was uh, asked to review the working of the Rajendra Agricultural University and give a report. In that, and Dr. H. P. Singh was that time the Vice Chancellor. Besides visiting the headquarters over there, again I visited this place and probably the Honorable Minister would be happy to know that at that time itself I felt that Sabor campus needed to be a full flat university. I am glad, sir, that you made it possible for the state to give it a the third time I came with Dr. Chaudhary, I came to the Rajendra Agricultural University and along with him he brought me to see this campus. We always thought that the campus has a very good future besides having a very past, very excellent history. And I am glad today after seeing just a few laboratories, I can tell you it's very difficult to uh, showcase any institution in a matter of two and a half years to the level that Dr. Chaudhary has shown. I think let us congratulate <laughs> All of you who are working here are very lucky. And I think you should take full advantage of your period which you are spending here. Because today it's very difficult to deal, find out competent vice chancellors as also competent other people, you know. And you are very lucky that we have a very dynamic vice chancellor like Dr. Chaudhary, whom I have known for both. Uh, two, two and a half decades. Now coming here, I say this seminar, of course, as Dr. Kirti Singh has said, is very timely. Three things that important have been important in the last couple of years. The first was the Green Revolution. The second was the emphasis on diversification, which the government of India laid to improve the income of the farmers. And the third threatening thing, which is now being talked about more than the revolution and also the diversification, is the climate change. But I think we have very successfully already got through all the challenges. The Green Revolution, which was a challenge in the early 50s, we successfully, you know, the food scarcity, which was a challenge in the early 60s, we successfully mounted that. And the Green Revolution was the result of our efforts during the during 60s and 70s. Suddenly after, you know, horticulture which was known to be a profession of very, very elite people, suddenly became important towards sustainability, generating more incomes, improving the uh, environmental conditions, increasing the employment opportunities and its contribution to the nutritional security of the country in late 70s. At that time, there was not much, the science of horticulture was right in its initial stages, much of the technology was not available. I think that's the, that's the time that I got an opportunity to be in the system and thought that horticulture needed a push-up. There were three drivers of development of horticulture at that time which we thought that should be taken into consideration. The pattern was the same as that of the Green Revolution. I think the three drivers was good financial allocations, creation of good infrastructure, and generating of technology which is responsible for high production. I think three, the three things, they have been very significant. As far as the financial allocation is concerned, we will be happy to know that the financial allocations from sixth plan, which was seventh plan, which was 25 uh, crores in 11th plan, it was 15,000 crores. And uh, I share the credit for that because I was chairman of three plan periods of the planning commission 
to develop the national plan for horticulture for the country. And the type of funds that we projected were uh, virtually out of the you know, box. In fact, the planning commission also thought that we were going out of our sphere to project several thousands of uh, crores of rupees. But ultimately, the allocation was proportionate to what we did. That was the first thing. The second thing was, you know, we were very much keen that there should be suitable infrastructure. We had only four or five institutions in agriculture in the country under the government of India. We created 22 institutions. Virtually every crop which has an importance in the country, both for fresh production, also for export, or for a processing purpose. We created a national research center. Today we have national research centers on citrus, we have on grape, we have on banana, we have on onion and garlic, orchids, vegetable plants, mushroom, I mean everything. You talk of anything which is important in agriculture and we are having a very sound program of research on these crops in the country network and uh, I think it has become the envy of all other disciplines that such a network could have been created in the discipline of agriculture. Third is the technology. I think that of technology has been developed already a large number of varieties, several hybrid varieties in vegetables, varieties in flowers, fruits and vegetables, technologies in propagation, technologies in production, new technologies like protected irrigation, high density planting, then, you know, also canopy management, I mean, micro-irrigation, fertigation, you talk of anything, disease detection. I think there has been a, really a revolution of technologies which have made the horticulture more and more technology dependent and the development which has to take place in years to come is not going to be merely by people who love horticulture, but by people who would like to make use of these technologies in the improvement of articles of crop production. Coming to the third thing, there have been several threatening issues when crops like agriculture have been developing. I think one of the uh, important issues which continues to affect the production is the planting material. Unfortunately, despite our effort on planting material, several initiatives, several seminars, lot of money having been spent, our position is not very strong. I think first is that our nurseries are not accredited as is required by the government of India. Second is even today, it is unfortunate that several states continue to find <coughs> plant material on quotation, which does not really result in knowing even the identity of the plant and ensuring the quality of the material, even whether the variety which we are buying is also the right one or not. So I think one of the important aspects which needs to be given uh, importance by every state continues to be the planting material. Today we saw the micro-irrigation facility at the university. We were very much impressed by the achievements made in a short time. A building has come up, there is a laboratory, there are the uh, hardening chambers, and then there are the new lakhs of plants that are available. And as I understand already, four lakhs of plants have already been distributed among the farmers. It's a very, very significant achievement. In fact, three things combined, that is a micro-propagated uh, micro banana, micro-irrigation and fertigation have revolutionized banana cultivation in Maharashtra state. And wherever it is grown, the yields have virtually doubled and trebled. And I think the same would happen in the Bihar state, wherever banana has been cultivated. So the point I was making is that planting material is one of the important aspects which needs to be continued to be given some attention. Then we have uh, several high technologies which are required to produce more and more. And there again we have to see that the yield pattern which in our crops happens to be comparatively much lower than what is potential has to be increased through the technologies which have been developed. And I then the third thing is, a lot of risk factors are coming. And one of the major risk factors is the climate change. Besides the pest and disease incident, the climate change has affected, as all of you know, the temperature ranges. It has affected the amount of intensity of rainfall, the rainfall pattern. It has also resulted into cyclones. It has resulted in the rise in the seawater level. And consequently, many other things which are related to that. 
And I think it is necessary. Of course, uh, uh, current, currently, much research is not being done on this aspect, but then observational things are available, which I'll be talking in my talk later. I think we have to work more and more uh, on this aspect, be vigilant about the effects of, adverse effects of uh, climate change, and then, you know, sensitize our people, both public and uh, even the government officials, to the changing situations which are affecting our crops, changing climate pattern, so that in future we are ready to face this important challenge and we can save our crops from the climate change or the effects of climate change. In India, particularly when the agriculture is one of the basis of our economy of a large number of farmers, maybe over 70 percent, I think it's necessary that the ravages of climate are taken care of. One of the important aspects to take care of on policy level would be uh, the uh, insurance of you know, crops in which aspect, particularly in horticulture crops, we have not done much. While in other crops, the insurance is working well, I think there is need to develop modules of suitable insurance patterns where both the companies with launch insurance and also the farmers may take insurance, both are equally benefited. Currently, the programs, the, pro the uh, modules which are available are lopsided with the result that insurance as a uh, agent for managing the risk has not taken deep roots in our system. Similarly, there is need for developing varieties. Again, I'll give details later on. I think there are several initiatives which are required to be taken. I hope this uh, uh, seminar is very quite timely and all of us collectively will come to a con conclusion as to what needs to be done as far as the policy, the such priorities, the development priorities and the social obligations as far as these issues are concerned are to be taken into consideration. I'm very happy to see a very large group of participants from various parts of the country. I'm sure collectively will benefit from the interaction that we have with each other. And I'm sure with the guidance of our honorable agriculture minister, who has, uh, as the vice chancellor said, is responsible for giving this university, and also our chief guest, just as, and then other senior people who are available in the route. The deliberation will be very successful, and by tomorrow evening, we'll be ready with a plan to see as to what can be done in various parts of the country for various crops. Bihar, as has been indicated, has a very good history of horticulture, but uh, I think much more needs to be done again here, so that the past glory about which Dr. Kirti Singh talked about can be brought back. It's good to talk about the past glory, but it's also good to anticipate that we want to achieve the same glory in coming years. With these remarks, I would like to thank Dr. Chaudhary for inviting me on this function. Soon I'll be talking to you again in greater detail and I'm hopeful that the outcome of this seminar will be very useful. Thank you very much.